Hello and welcome to the Atoll, your home for Waterworld fandom. In today's deep dive video, we'll be taking a look at everything we know about the Smoker Scout Plane, or Skyboat, from how the vehicle was brought to life through the production of the film to where the aircraft fits in the greater Waterworld lore. So without further ado, let's get that prop spinning and the Skyboat airborne. In the film, we are first introduced to the Smoker Scout Plane as the Smoker Armada moves into attack position around the defending Atoll. Several minutes into the battle, the Atoll Enforcer spots a new threat approaching from beyond the Atoll walls. In one of the most impressive shots in the entire film, we start at sea level focusing on four berserker water skiers crossing the open ocean being pulled by an unseen vehicle. Then the helicopter shot pulls back to reveal that these smokers are in fact being pulled by none other than an ancient and tattered airplane. And I just wanted to give a little peek behind the scenes here and say that the scout plane in the scene is not pulling the water skiers and that this is actually an incredibly clever special effects shot. You see, during the production of this scene, it was actually determined that the plane was far too underpowered to tow the skiers and that the shot would look too slow and undynamic. Here in a later shot, you can actually see a glimpse of the smoker skyboat towing the skiers itself and how slow it is seemingly moving across the water. To correct this, the water skiers were pulled by a high-powered helicopter instead. A large 500-pound lead ball was suspended over 100 feet below the helicopter. From the ball, four pull lines were attached. This system ensured that the wires would not get tangled in the rotors of the helicopter and it would also give enough room for the real scout plane flying parallel and in front of the ball to drop down into frame, making it look as if the vehicle was pulling the skiers below. The whole system had to be carefully analyzed and signed off by Federal Aviation Administration officials before shooting could begin. The shot truly tested the skills of the water ski stunt people as they had to be pulled for miles across choppy open ocean as the two helicopters and the stunt plane moved into the correct positions to capture the shot. The visual effects company Cinesite did some digital cleanup of this shot by removing the metal ball and the long wire that ran up to the helicopter above and touching up the four cables running down to the skiers below. And if you watch the shot frame by frame, you can actually see that the wires completely disappear at a certain point as the scout plane drops into frame. But since it was all filmed in a single fluid shot, the effect feels totally seamless and natural, a true feat in practical filming with the use of subtle digital effects. The smoker scout plane continues to pull the water skiers towards the atoll walls where a floating launch ramp has been set up. In a spectacular sequence of shots, the water skiers fly through the air, over the walls, and land safely in the atoll's inner lagoon. And in the shot of the water skiers approaching the ramps, the scout plane has been much more hastily added to the shot digitally, with the colors not quite matching the rest of the scene and the rotoscope job even popping in a few frames. However, the effect blends fairly well thanks to the smoke trail behind the plane. To make it appear as if the water skiers are launching over the atoll walls, an edited series of shots was used to create the superhuman stunt. The first shot shows the skiers riding up the launch ramp head on. The next shot is a point of view helicopter shot going over the wall and then we see the skiers just barely clipping over the top of the atoll walls. In actuality, this was a dummy section of wall that was built just off the water surface as you can see from this production image. The final shot in this sequence shows the skiers dropping into the atoll's lagoon. This was achieved by the stunt people riding in a specially built chair that hung below the helicopter. As the helicopter passed over the atoll set, the stunt people simply leapt from the chair into the water below. After the plane has made its initial pass, we can see it in several other shots laying down gunfire upon the atoll, and I guess we are to assume that the other water skiers pulled off the launch ramp later in the battle are also pulled by the smoker scout plane. In the extended cut of Waterworld, we are also treated to this extra shot of the scout plane swooping over the atoll. After the battle and the Trimoran's escape, the Deacon announces to his smokers that they need to send out the skyboat on patrol in search of the Trimoran and in turn Enola and the map to dry land. Several scenes later, this results in one of the most exciting sequences in the entire film. 
After one of many petty confrontations between the Mariner and his two passengers, he spots the smoker scout plane approaching over the horizon. The plane begins to circle around the boat, and this is when we get our first close-up of the pilot and the gunner. And yep, the pilot is none other than comedian, actor, and rock star Jack Black. And the gunner is played by John Tolls Bay, who would later go on to be in films like Dude Where's My Car and K-Pax. As the plane circles around the trimaran, the gunner takes to his weapon and begins firing maniacally upon the boat. The gun itself is an M60 machine gun fitted with a barrel jacket in the style of an aircraft MG-08-15 Spandau. When the gun jams up, the plane's gunner utters the one and only F-bomb in the entire film of Waterworld, which was of course censored in the TV version to quote, Oh come on! The TV version also censors the pilot smoking a cigarette in the cockpit and the bloody harpoon going through the plane's gunner later in the sequence. As the bullets rain down on the boat, the Mariner heads below deck. Helen, thinking that the Mariner is running away from the battle, takes to the bow-mounted harpoon gun, while Enola hides and illustrates the drama with a stolen crayon. When the plane's machine gun jams, Helen lines up her shot. The Mariner emerges from the Trimoran's cabin and sees the inevitable disaster about to unfold. Helen lets loose the harpoon which spears through the scout plane and its gunner. The harpoon, however, has a lion attached to it which now tethers the scout plane to the Trimoran. The plane winds around the boat, pulling the harpoon gun off the bow and tangling it in the stays of the mast, further ensnaring itself. The Mariner climbs the mast to cut the line and free the plane, while the smoker pilot is also trying to sever the line by shooting it with a pistol. Eventually, the pilot is successful, snapping the line and freeing the plane. The trimaran recoils, launching the Mariner from the top of the mast to the waters below. The entire plane versus trimaran scene was carefully planned out with storyboards and animatics before shooting, and in actuality, the scout plane was never tethered to the trimaran. The visual effects company Cinesite used 3D modeling and animation to add in the cable as it is launched towards the plane and as the plane and the boat are playing out their game of tug of war. They then used rotoscoping techniques on the captured footage to cut out the plane and trimaran in order to place the CG cable in between these elements. In addition to the cable connecting the plane and the boat, several key mast cables were removed and animated back in to further sell the tangling effect in the scene. There are a total of 15 individual shots with computer animated cables added. According to the Macalifex synopsis of the VFX work done on Waterworld which I acquired through an online auction, the film crew actually had a helicopter with a cable attached to the trimaran fly circles around the boat during the filming in Hawaii. But it was determined in post-production that the helicopter and the cable would have to be completely painted out and replaced with a CGI cable and the scout plane which was extracted from the sky of a different shot and then matted behind the mast and the rigging of the trimaran. This shot in the film is actually pretty easy to identify because the plane does not have its characteristic smoke trail behind it. Shots looking up at the mast with the cable winding around it were actually captured on land with a special gimbaled mast that was built by the mechanical effects crew. Close-ups of Black and Tolls Bay in the cockpit were captured on a green screen stage at Universal Studios. The production team created a mock-up of the aircraft and suspended it from the ceiling with wires and filmed it with a camera on a crane. The camera crew added movement to these shots, which Cinesite then tracked and added the same movement into the background plates, which were captured on location from a helicopter equipped with a space cam, a special type of aerial stabilizing camera. This scene has a total of 21 green screen composite shots. After the smoker scout plane retreats from its encounter with the trimaran, we are given a scene with the smoker pilot aboard the Ds. In the extended cut of the film, we are treated with an early in his career Jack Black performance and, oh boy, is it a Jack Black performance. The smoker pilot bemoans the death of his friend and comrade, Ed, the scout plane gunner, before giving the Deacon and the Nord the last known location of the trimaran and its heading. And from this information, the Deacon is able to make an educated guess as to where the smokers should ambush the Mariner and his companions next. 
The smoker scout plane does not show back up in the film until its finale, which takes place aboard the smoker's lair, known as the Dees, a giant rusted out oil tanker from the days of the ancients. The first shot of the scout plane on the Dees in the extended cut of the film is of the smokers refueling the plane on the top deck of the ship. The mariner, looking on from a distance, noticed that the fuel is being pumped from an opening that leads into the interior of the ship. This will come back up in just a minute. But the novelization of Waterworld even goes a step further into expanding out the scene and describes the smoker scout plane actually landing on the deck of the Dees. Quote, Smokers, perhaps hundreds of them, or even more, fanning out on either side of the deck in two ungainly groups, pulling a thick, heavy rope between them. Snagging the plane's pylons, the smokers grunting and groaning and yelling as they strained to slow the airship, the rope sliding burningly through their hands as they moved in a mass with the still-moving plane. Finally coming to a screeching stop, the men tumbling bumping into each other. Another successful smoker landing. This scene described in the novelization was actually meant to be shot on the 600-foot deck of the Ds constructed in the city of Commerce in California, but it was determined by the production crew that it was too dangerous to pull off this stunt. Though there is this concept art from the pre-production of the film which clearly illustrates the idea of the smoker skyboat using the deck of the Ds as a landing strip. In the theatrical cut of the movie, the smoker scout plane is only introduced back to us in a variety of wide crowd shots as the deacon is giving his final sermon to his smoker followers. However, in all versions of the film, the smoker scout plane does play a pivotal role in the climax of the film. After the mariner has dropped the flare through the same opening he saw the smoker flight crew refueling the scout plane through in the extended cut of the film, he escapes by hiding in the bowels of the Ds. Many of the exterior shots of the Ds blowing up are actually 112 foot long, 1 8 scale miniatures shot in the desert outside of Los Angeles County, and according to the Making of Waterworld book, two miniature versions of the Smoker Scout Plane, one with landing gear and one without, were also created to sit on the deck of this miniature ship. And while a production still of the miniature plane actually exists, unfortunately nowhere in the film do we actually see the scaled down plane in use. Shout out to Jamie Going, friend of the channel, for pointing this one out to me. When the Mariner re-emerges on the bridge of the Ds, he spies the Deacon dragging Enola towards the smoker scout plane down on the deck below. The Deacon starts the plane's engine and moves the aircraft into takeoff position. At this point, I would just like to pause for a minute and talk about the real-world airplane that was selected to be used as the Smoker Scout Plane and why it's perfect for the production of Waterworld. The Smoker Scout Plane is a Helio Courier H295 stunt plane manufactured by Helio Aircraft Company from 1954 to 1974. Only about 500 of these planes were ever created and the H295 is the most common variant of them. The Helio Couriers are most famous for their takeoffs and landings, which they can perform on an extremely short runway, with a specially designed gearbox that lowers the output RPM to the hefty three-bladed propeller, the Courier is able to achieve flight or land in as little as 100 feet. And ultimately, this feature of the plane made it ideal for the Waterworld production because taking off and landing on the deck of the D's set could be done practically without any visual effects tricks. According to San Diego Seaplanes, a company that does aerial tours of the California coast, they were the ones responsible for designing and constructing the Smoker Scout Plane used in the film. As the Smoker Scout Plane positions itself for takeoff, the Mariner, thinking quick on his feet, grabs a harpoon gun and shoots it out across the deck of the Ds, snaring a pole on the other side. The harpoon and the line wrapping around the pole were actually done digitally with computer animation. The Mariner fastens the harpoon gun, then grabbing a large hook, begins to slide down the line. In the film industry, this type of stunt is called a slide for life, and Kevin Costner pulled off the stunt himself all while explosions erupted from the deck of the Ds. The hook, in actuality, was constructed of aluminum, and Costner was connected to the rig with a body harness, a follow cam, and a braking system at the end of the line. 
When producer Charles Gordon was first inspecting the slide for life, he said there was no way that movie star Kevin Costner would pull off the stunt himself. At that, director Kevin Reynolds launched himself off the bridge of the D's and slid down the line himself to prove that the mechanism was safe. The Mariner's quick actions place him out in front of the smoker skyboat on the deck of the D's. He takes the hook he slid on and connects it to a cable. Running out in front of the now airborne plane, the Mariner jumps up and snags the landing gear with the tethered hook. The shot from the underside of the plane looking down at the Mariner hooking it was actually a tricky one to pull off. The plane's landing gear and camera were attached to a crane that could rise up to simulate the plane taking off and have Costner hook it from underneath. Unfortunately, once everything was ready to go, it was deemed by the production crew that the deck of the D's was constructed too lightly and it could not support the crane's weight. The crew had to reinforce a large section of the deck with more plywood, then repaint and redecorate it. All of this work for a shot that's only 19 frames long. With the hook attached, the landing gear is ripped off the plane, which goes skidding across the top of the D's, slamming into the front deck of the ship. Interestingly, in the novelization, the Mariner stretches a cable across the runway and clotheslines the plane's landing gear instead. Also in the novelization, the Deacon kills the smoker pilot to make more room for him and Enola, and there's a launch ramp at the end of the D's to assist with the plane's takeoff. In the film, this was an actual stunt performed by veteran stunt pilot Craig Hoskins on a tarmac in the Mojave Desert that was done up to look just like the end of the set of the D's in the City of Commerce. Hoskins flew the Helio Courier over a device that would snag the landing gear and rip it off in front of the camera as he set the plane down into a controlled crash into the front deck of the D's. Hoskins flew over the tarmac several times to line up his approach and make sure that there was enough run out, knowing full well that this was a one-shot deal because the production only had one stunt plane to destroy. In the end, Hoskins pulled off the stunt flawlessly in a single take. After the plane has come to a crashing halt, the Mariner runs up beside it and is finally reunited with Enola, who survived the crash relatively unharmed but their heartfelt reunion is soon interrupted as the D starts to tilt upwards and sink beneath the waves of Waterworld, presumably taking the wrecked smoker scout plane along with it. But of course, that is not where this video ends, because we want to know where else does the smoker skyboat appear in the greater Waterworld lore and expanded universe. Well, let's first take a look at the original Peter Rader screenplay of Waterworld and see if we can find any evidence of the Smoker Scout plane's origins. And, lo and behold, there is actually a seaplane introduced at the very end of the original screenplay. Our companions aboard the USS Bridgenston, a large partially abandoned ship that they find in the final act of the script, discover an old pontoon plane on its vast deck. In the final pages of the script, our companions use the plane to escape the ship that is overrun by attacking pirates and has a giant gasoline bomb set to go off on it. In fact, in a very similar fashion to how the Mariner races down the plane with a slide for life in the film, the plane in the original script races a fuse to the bomb down the deck runway of the ship. The plane lifts off in just the nick of time. Following the coordinates that they have obtained from the lunar eclipse, see my video on the mysteries of Enola's tattoo if you want more information on that, the companions fly the plane to water's end with just enough fuel to set down the aircraft on the paradise's sandy beaches. Enola says to herself, now I'm really home. As we talked about earlier, the novelization has an extra scene in which the skyboat lands on the deck of the D's. The novelization has another very interesting scene in which the entire Smoker clan is gathered together in a theater aboard the D's, and they're watching a John Wayne film, which from the description is most likely Flying Tigers, a film about World War II fighter pilots. The Deacon then shuts off the film and addresses the crowd, telling them that the first one to find the Mariner and his companions will be awarded a videotape titled Operation Desert Storm, The Air War. This scene leads me to believe that there is a cult of aircraft among the Smoker clan in the way that they worship these films about airplane warfare. Also, have you ever noticed that in the film, the Deacon actually wears an airplane medallion around his neck, much like a holy cross. 
In the many video games of Waterworld, the Smoker Scout Plane also makes some surprise appearances. The Super NES and Sega Genesis games both have the Smoker Skybo as an enemy sprite. Also, the supposedly leaked pre-rendered intro video to the cancelled Sega Genesis video game sports some pretty impressive flyovers from the Smoker Scout Plane. And, of course, Universal Studios Theme Park Adventure on the GameCube plays an animation of the Smoker Skyboat launching into the stadium of Waterworld, a live Sea War spectacular. And that leads us into our discussion of the plane in the live stunt show at Universal Studios Theme Park. This 2,200 pound pilotless seaplane is catapulted from a patented 30 foot launch track over a breakaway wall and into the Atoll Lagoon below, and is truly one of the highlights of the show. It is interesting to note that the plane in the stunt show is considerably different from the plane in the movie, with its twin propellers, more forward cockpit, and boom mounted tail. The plane in the stunt show more closely resembles something like a North American Rockwell OV 10 Bronco with pontoons attached. If you'd like a deeper exploration of the Smoker Skyboat of the Universal Studios stunt show, I would encourage you to check out my video on the entire history of the Sea War Spectacular here on this channel. The stunt show just recently opened a fourth location in Beijing, China, so expect a follow-up video on that new location in the near future. Looking at the FLIR Ultra trading cards, there are several cards pertaining to the Smoker Scout Plane, like number 60, Sea and Air, number 106, Aborted Takeoff, and number 127, Long Haul. Interestingly, the description of number 106 aborted takeoff mentions that because of the burning oil reserves in the bowels of the Ds, the tires of the scout plane are melting on the deck of the ship, which hinders the Deacon's escape. This fact is also reiterated in the novelization, quote, The mariner grinned as he coasted along his line. The scolding deck was melting the rubber of the plane's tires. The Smoker Scout Plane also makes an appearance in the Waterworld Pog series on Pog number 31. The Waterworld Pinball game also has a small appearance of the Smoker Scout Plane here on the upper right hand side of the playfield. In the Waterworld board game, you can actually spot the Smoker Scout Plane on the deck of this beautifully illustrated rendering of the Ds. And in the Waterworld comic book series, I believe there's a subtle homage to the Smoker Scout Plane among its pages. In comic number 3, when the Mariner stocks up on supplies from his secret underwater hoard, you can spot the three-bladed propeller of the Smoker Scout Plane hanging here on the wall. But before we close this video out, you're probably wondering whatever happened to the Smoker Scout Plane after the production of Waterworld wrapped? Well, all I can say is that we don't know exactly where it is or who owns it, but I can pretty confidently say that the plane is probably still in existence. The last known record of the plane as of the recording of this video is from 2017 where the fuselage, propeller, wings, tail, and production documentation like storyboards and crew list were sold in an online auction for $1,600 from its then present location in Carlsbad, California. And that is where the trail goes cold. So if you have any more information about what happened to the Smoker seaplane after this auction ended nearly five years ago, please let me know in the comments down below. But there you have it, that is everything we know about the Smoker Skyboat. This was a pretty extensive video to put together, so if you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a thumbs up before you leave. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel. We're edging in on 1,000 subscribers and I am so thankful to everyone who has subscribed and followed along with me on this journey. Also, feel free to follow the Atoll on Instagram for even more Waterworld content and updates about future videos. Link in the description below. But with that, thanks, as always, for joining me at the Atoll.